Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're covering a prolapsed umbilical cord. This is a true obstetric emergency. Let's dive right into it by going through our practice question. A nurse is caring for a laboring client when a fetal heart rate suddenly drops to 62 beats per minute. Upon performing a cervical exam, the nurse feels something soft and pulsating. So what's the priority nursing action? Your choices are to A, attempt to push the cord back into the uterus, B, elevate the presenting fetal part and call for help, C, encourage the client to bear down and push, or D, apply a warm compress to the perineum. So hang on to that, think through your answer, and we'll circle back to the correct choice at the end. But first, we need to get into what actually is a prolapsed umbilical cord. The name kind of gives it away. The umbilical cord has prolapsed or slipped through the cervix and into the vagina after membranes have ruptured, but before the baby fully descends into the birth canal. So picture the anatomy of this, right? Baby's up in the uterus, and they've got this umbilical cord going from placenta to baby to bring them all their oxygen. Babies aren't in there breathing with their lungs. They're getting all oxygen from mom. So now membranes rupture. That amniotic sac breaks. The fluid rushes out. Baby, we're in labor, moving through the birth canal, but the cord goes through the cervix first. So it's now protruding into the vagina. The baby's head is pushing on it and it is trapped. This totally cuts off oxygen. No more blood is flowing from placenta to fetus. Think of the umbilical cord kind of like a garden hose that is delivering that oxygen to the baby. Now imagine you're stepping on it. You totally kink off that hose. The flow slows down or stops completely and now baby has no oxygen. That is what's happening during a cord prolapse. And if we don't relieve that compression, seriously, pronto, right away, the baby is going to experience severe hypoxia and bradycardia, which can ultimately lead to damage and fetal death if we don't deliver this baby. So you need to be able to recognize it and act on it very quickly. There are two major ways you are going to recognize this emergency. First, that fetal heart rate drop, okay? Severe bradycardia. It's going to be definitely less than 100. I mean, in, in our practice question, it's less than 60. It is super low. And the key here is it drops and it stays low. It's not like a deceleration where it comes right back up. It is just dangerously low because that cord is compressed and the baby's no longer getting oxygen. Secondly, in a cervical exam, you can actually see it. That prolapsed cord, it went through the cervix. You see it protruding. It is soft, squishy, sometimes pulsating. That is the umbilical cord. The mom might report, hey, I feel something weird between my legs. In some cases, you can see it protruding from the vagina. That's called an overt cord prolapse. Absolutely true emergency. Now, I have not spent a ton of time myself working in L&D, but I did start over in the mother baby unit at one of my first jobs. So my most vivid memory of a cord prolapse was kind of an accident. Like I wasn't really supposed to be there. I was going to get a mom who had finished delivering. She was ready to come over to mother baby. All of a sudden, everyone is hollering. The code light is going off. Doctors are running. Nurses are running. I'm kind of caught in the middle of it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I help, right? Because I don't have a client at the moment. I was going to get them. Oh, they could wait a few minutes. So I come in, and baby on the monitor, heart rate in the 50s. Very, very, very low. Mom is absolutely white as a ghost, just sitting in the bed, not moving. She doesn't really know what to do. Then there's a nurse between her leg, who also looks white as a ghost, very afraid, who is holding the presenting part of the fetus. She had rushed into the room as soon as that fetal heart rate dropped. That happened like right as I was walking onto their unit. She knew right away, hey, that heart rate is down and it's staying down. Immediately, she grabbed a set of gloves, went to check mom, and it was one of those overt 
cord prolapse events where she could actually see the umbilical cord squishy pulsating she knew a hundred percent that's exactly what that was she said mom stay right there she hit the emergency bell and put her hand on that fetal presenting part to elevate it so in this case it was the baby's head presenting part means like whatever is presenting to the world whatever part of that baby is coming out first and in this case most cases where we want it is the head So that head was sitting right on the umbilical cord and causing that compression, kinking off that garden hose, right? Baby's head, umbilical cord, squooshing, so there was no blood flow. Immediately as she hit that call bell, she lifted that baby's head up so that it wasn't squooshing on that garden hose. That relieved the compression and the baby's heart rate came back up pretty quickly this is about the time that I'm walking into the room like hey you know you need a little bit of help I'm right here and again pretty quickly that heart rate started coming up into the 60s 70s 80s I think it was as low as the 50s when I first walked into the room so she just starts hollering at people she tells me to grab some oxygen another two nurses start repositioning her they placed her into Trendelenburg so Head down, feet up. Basically, we are trying to use gravity in our favor to shift baby away from the cord. Another option is knee to chest position. The client can be on all fours with the chest down. That also relieves the pressure. This mama was already in bed. She was already far along in her labor when the prolapse happened. So Trendelenburg was easiest. Another two nurses kind of messed with the bed. Head down, feet up. Gravity helped shift that baby off the cord. I put some nasal cannula oxygen on mom. I do want to note we are giving oxygen not for the fact that mom doesn't have enough, but the fact that we are not getting enough oxygen to baby. The more oxygen we can load up and immediately get to them, the better. But giving oxygen is not going to fix the problem, right? That wasn't like the immediate priority. The priority was getting that baby off the cord, lifting that presenting part up because that actually relieves the, the kink in the garden hose, so to speak, so that the blood can flow back to baby. Same thing with positioning. That's helping get baby off. The oxygen, honestly, I was doing the least. I was told to put oxygen on, right? And that helps get a little more going to baby, but again, not the priority. Then what the next nurse did, she came in with some sterile, moist towels and went ahead and placed that over the cord. Why? She knew we needed to prevent that cord from drying out because if it did, that would really compromise blood flow. Now, Overall, we are trying to stat get this client to the operating room for an emergency C-section. Nothing is going to fix this except getting baby out. They are now in a position where if they go through the birth canal, they are actively cutting off their own blood supply and therefore all of their oxygen. So we now have this whole ensemble of mom in Trendelenburg position, you know, head down, feet up. One nurse with her hand lifting that baby's head up off the cord. Me giving oxygen. Another nurse wrapping that umbilical cord in a sterile towel. And we now have to get this situation moved to the operating room ASAP. The most important person in this ensemble is that nurse lifting the baby's head off the presenting part. I can go, you know, through the nasal cannula on. That was my heroic moment of the day. I Again, I really didn't help that much. The nurses that positioned her, they got out of the way. She was in Trendelenburg. But that nurse lifting the head needs to keep her hand right there until that baby is removed from mom via C-section. She now cannot move. Now, I get the question sometimes, Morgan, shouldn't we be putting on sterile gloves? In a typical cervical check or exam, we are very careful about putting on sterile gloves. We don't want to introduce any possible bacteria or germs up there. Of course. But you know what? We can deal with a little bit of an infection. We've got antibiotics. What we can't deal with is a baby who is not getting any oxygen because that is just kinked off 
due to the prolapsed cord. So this nurse had thrown on clean gloves on her way into the room. She was an absolute pro, but no, putting sterile gloves on, not our priority. So that nurse stayed right there. They raced down the hall, got right into the OR. I'm telling you, those OBGYNs can get into the OR and get a C-section going in no time. Within minutes, that baby had been delivered and was happy and healthy. No resuscitation was needed. APGARs were great because those interventions really worked. As the nurse had lifted the head off of the cord, that blood was flowing back to baby. Their heart rate was back above 110. That quick action really resulted in what could have been a poor outcome being really positive. So with that being said, let's go back to our original question because I think now you guys are going to have the right answer. Remember, you're a nurse caring for a client when the fetal heart rate suddenly drops to 62 beats per minute. Upon performing a cervical exam, you feel something soft and pulsating. What is your priority nursing action? Once again, the choices are A, attempt to push that cord back in. B, elevate that presenting part and call for help. C, encourage that client to bear down and push. Or D, apply a warm compress to the perineum. Say your right answer out loud with me. I know you know it. It is, in fact, B, elevating that presenting fetal part and getting help. Number one priority, get that presenting part off the cord. That will relieve the pressure and restore blood flow. We get oxygen going back to baby and their heart rate starts going back up. A, attempting to push that cord back into the uterus, very incorrect. Say it with me, I promise to never, ever, ever try to push a prolapsed umbilical cord back inside the uterus. This can cause the cord to go back inside, but the baby's presenting part fall back on it, still compressing the cord. That is our occult prolapsed cord where we can't actually see a slipped through pulsating cord, but it is still getting compressed by that presenting part. So still causing the problem even harder to manage. We definitely do not ever push that cord back inside. Next, C, encouraging that client to bear down and push. Again, very incorrect. If that client is pushing, they are making things worse by further putting pressure on that cord, kinking off the supply of oxygen, and causing further fetal hypoxia and distress. They can no longer have a vaginal delivery. It is just not possible. That exit path is blocked by the lifeline bringing oxygen to the baby. So we got a stat C-section. Lastly, D, I'm sure no one picked apply a warm compress to the perineum. That is really not going to do anything to fix our problem. If you did pick this, you might have gotten it confused with that warm sterile towel that we wanted to put over the cord to keep it moist and prevent it from getting damaged. That does help. We're going to do that again in route to the OR because C-section is the end goal here. So as your key takeaway, you have to make sure to recognize the signs of a prolapsed cord and immediately elevate that presenting part while calling for help. Other interventions include Trindellenburg, so gravity can help us out, giving some oxygen to maximize fetal oxygenation, wrapping that cord in a warm, moist, sterile towel. But ultimately, you got to get that mama to the OR. So priority number one, always going to be elevate that presenting part. You guys have got it. All right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures, high-yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at ArcherReview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.